This time around, we're going to take a look at multi-factor authentication in Microsoft 365. How does it work? And more importantly, what are the pitfalls to avoid? Stay tuned. Greetings YouTubers, Andy Malone, Microsoft MVP and Microsoft Certified Trainer. Welcome back to the channel, I really appreciate you stopping by. This time around I thought we'd take a look at multi-factor authentication in Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Azure. It's a critical technology that will keep not only your infrastructure, but it will also keep your users safe as well. But just exactly how to set it up and how it works and always uh, how to avoid those potential pitfalls. So we're going to take a look at that. Now, if you've not subscribed to the channel, I really appreciate you going on and clicking on that subscribe button, ringing the bell, and you won't miss out on future videos. And as always, if you could give me a like, you'll go ahead and hit that like button. It really does help my channel out a lot. And of course, if you've got questions, comments from this and any of my other videos, as always, please pop them down below and I will do my best to answer them for you. And of course, if you've got requests uh, for future sessions, I'm interested in those as well. So I think without any more jibber jabber, I think it's about time for a demo, don't you? So just a little background of information for you. Um, you've probably seen this site, Have I Been Pwned? Now, this is all down to the fact that passwords are so simple and so easy to potentially hack. Um, and so things that you can do, obviously, to avoid this, um, you can obviously change the way that you sign in. Now, when we talk about legacy authentication, we're typically referring to passwords. And passwords are something that you know. So, and again, the problem with this is it doesn't prove who you are. So you can also use something else. So things like Windows Hello, uh, for example. So this could be something that you have. So for example, a FIDO key or your mobile device or something like that. But it can also be something that you are as well. So biometrics can include things like your face, fingerprint, handprint, voice even, and so on. And it can also be somewhere where you are. So, for example, a specific location. And you can set this up as part of conditional access. Now, if you've not seen that video, I recommend that you go and take a look at that video. And what I'll do is I'll put the link in the description. Okay, so when we talk about... Uh, traditional credential stealing, this is essentially how it works. So you've got tools like John the Ripper, Lufcrack, Kane Enable, and to be honest, they work as well today as they did 25 years ago, and they're still perfect. Um, and the problem is passwords. Um, essentially, what we have is we have the scenario where you have um, a password, let's say less than eight characters or eight less than 12 characters. And the problem is that many of the rain, what we call rainbow tables that many of these pieces of software use are essentially looking for those kind of patterns. Now, if you can't use multi-factor authentication, one potential thing that you could do is use something like a passphrase. So I love the enterprise Star Trek The Next Generation. Yeah, you know, a, a paragraph, a long piece of text. Rainbow tables have very... Uh, I've quite a bit of that. Um, other types of uh, attacks as well, very common, cross uh, a man in the middle attack, uh, cross site uh, forgery scripting. Um, and this is essentially a game of redirection. So it's essentially where the hammer, the uh, rather the hacker will send you a spam link, a malicious link. You'll click on that fake link, of course. And this is all social engineering. And then the hacker runs away with your credit card very very common now if you don't believe me um, that potentially somebody is hacking your uh, network then just to, this is actually mine you can go to my signins.microsoft.com today and you'll see that 
there are places in the world where hackers are randomly trying. I mean, let's face it, your email address is your username. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to use passwords against you. So multi-factor authentication will increase your security a 10,000. Now, how it technically works, of course, is we're going to talk about that in a second. But essentially, when you look at the benefits and compare them to the cons, um, you know, it, it's, it really is night and night. Okay. So how does it work? User logs in, of course, uh, connects to the secure token service. In this case, it's Azure Active Directory. It might be Google, um, it might be Amazon for you, whatever you use, but Fundamentally, it's the same technology. Now, it will then prompt the user. It will say, hey, okay, we need more information from you. And this can come in the form of a hardware token or a device. Or, of course, um, if you're using the mobile app like this, then you can approve that. Now, um, and then once that's approved, of course, then the user gains uh, access and so on. So this is how it looks from the user perspective. So essentially the user just pops in their username and password here and immediately it will say, hey, you know, hang on a moment. Uh, I need some more information from you. And it will prompt the user to put in their uh, user details um, and register a, a mobile device perhaps or a token or something like that. So once they've gone ahead, um, and download the mobile app. It might again ask you for some more information to prove that it is genuinely you. So once that authentication has been approved, simply then the user just clicks on approve and though that device and the user account is then connected. Now, of course, the nice thing about those um, uh, token services, for example, the authenticator, is that you can go out and add in other services as well. So things like your social networks, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, all of those, uh, you can add them in as well. So that's a fantastic way of configuring it. So now that you've seen the basics, let's now take a look at the technical aspects of deploying multi-factor authentication in both 365 and also in Azure. And also what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a look at some of the potential things that can go wrong and that you definitely need to look out for. Let's take a look. So kicking off here in the Microsoft 365 portal, I'm gonna click into the admin center and a couple of things, first of all, uh, to manage this, there's a couple of places where you can go. Now, um, you'll notice it says multi-factor authentication here. There's really not a lot here. The only thing that you have is just a link that will take you through to configure it and also a docs.microsoft.com article. Um, you can find exactly the same thing by going into users and active users here in the portal. And in here, I can, let's say, for example, I've got a user here called, let's say, Cameron. Okay, and one of the things, well, first of all, i make, make sure he's licensed. I've got a user here called Christy, and you can see that Christy is a licensed user. And what I can do is you can go either, you can either go into Christy's account here, and in Christie's account, you can see that we can go ahead and you can configure uh, multi-factor authentication from within here, okay? So you can do that for this particular user here. Now, the other place that you can do that is you can come up here to the toolbar and you can click on multi-factor authentication. Currently in 365, there are a couple of ways to do MFA. And this is the kind of slightly older portal, as you can probably see. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select Christy. You can see that at the moment her account is disabled. Um, well, the multi-factor authentication is disabled. And I'm going to click on to, first of all, enable this. 
And uh, I'm going to say I want to enable multi-factor authentication for the user. So now the user, when they next time that they log in, uh, what they'll get is that they'll get that MFA experience that you've just seen. Uh, now they do have 14 days in which to register. So every day it will go down by one day until finally on day zero, it will say you have to register for multi-factor authentication. Now, now that we've done that, you can also, you can, uh, one other option, you can actually enforce this as well by clicking on the enforce button. Um, and if I go into manage the user settings, there are a couple of options here. Um, require the selected user to provide contact details again. Um, delete all existing passwords generated with selected users and restore multi-factor authentication on all remembered devices. That can be quite useful for troubleshooting, by the way. So now that we've done that, um, one other little thing I can do, you can also, by the way, do a bulk update. So you can, there is a, a very nice deployment guide and there's also an MFA uh, kind of training kit and it's really good and I'm gonna include that um, as part of my um, materials that I'm going to share with you guys. So there's a, there's a very nice download of materials that you can get from Microsoft for this. Um, I'm going to click over here and I'm going to come up to service settings. So these are my service settings in multi-factor authentication. And there's a few things here. First of all, application passwords. Do you want the users to create the passwords or not create them. Um, trusted IP address ranges. This is a little bit dated now. You can actually do something similar in uh, conditional access, uh, which is part of uh, Azure Active Directory. Now, of course, if you don't have a premium license um, for that, then you can still gain access to this here. So for example, small business premium and so on. Um, this is particularly useful if you have different branch offices. Uh, well, the last thing that you want, you don't want to annoy your users into having to change their um, MFA or require MFA all the time. It can get a little bit frustrating. So what you can do is you can set up your branch office IP address ranges here. And so basically that means that when the user signs in in the office, they're already in a trusted location. So they don't need to do multi-factor authentication. So that's really good. Um, how do you want your users to verify? Do you want them to send a text message? That's a one-time text message. I'm sure we've seen that the banks are using it at the moment. This is probably one of the most popular ones, notification through the mobile app. And also you can do a verification code from a app or a hardware token. Um, again, you can see that's the remind, allow users to remember MFA devices. So when they authenticate on a device, you can control how many days to remember that for as well. Uh, again, uh, you know, it depends on the situation. If you were in a financial institution, you may want to bring that down. Um, if it was a, a non-critical function, you may want to increase it. So again, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to save those settings there. Now, as I mentioned, this is kind of a slightly older portal. For Microsoft Azure Active Directory, what I can do is I can come down here into the Admin Center and I can flip across into Azure Active Directory here. Now, in here, if I just click on the Azure AD and if I scroll right down and I'm going to click onto the Security Blade here. And in the Security Blade, the other place that you can do conditional access is the conditional access node here. And you can set MFA up for multiple sets of users, groups, and different scenarios. I did a video on this previously. Please check this out on my YouTube channel. Okay. Other things that we've also got here as well, um, you can go into authentication methods here. And in authentication methods, you can have, you can create different policies. Now you can see that we have different authentication methods. So if you're using FIDO keys, for example, um, for um, passwordless authentication, that's great. However, 
The downside of this is if you were an organization that locks out USB ports on laptops and PCs, this would not be any good for you. All right. Um, you've also got the Authenticator app here. You can do a text message preview. And I did a video on this uh, last year, actually, the temporary access pass. So particularly useful if a user uh, loses their device, you can essentially force them to re-register on a new device. Okay. So that is, um, those are the authentication options here. The other thing that we've got here is you've also got a number of different logs. So you can go in and you can view the user's activity, um, view registration details. So when users register for um, multi-factor authentication or register a device, you can see here whether the uh, device is capable or not. Um, again, we also have a feature just in the column here. You can see SSPR, uh, that is self-service password reset. Again, that is a, a premium license uh, version there. All right, so there we have it, just a number of uh, features there in Azure AD. Now, just before I leave this session, a couple of real potential gotchas and you can find this in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. And if I come down into Settings and Organizational Settings. So in here, I'm just in the Services node. And if I scroll down, you can see that uh, down here, we actually have um, multi-factor authentication here. Um, now you've got multi-factor authentication and you've got modern authentication. Um, mm, okay, so modern authentication, if I click into this first, um, really, really critical that you understand this. Turn on mo modern authentication for Outlook and Microsoft applications. And what modern authentication means is it, is it supports things like um, Windows Hello for Business, all right? So uh, again, these old clients that are using these old protocols or older protocols do not support this technology. So, you know, you definitely want to be careful with this and remove these old protocols. And you'll note, by the way, that they're on by default. OK, you can also do this in conditional access in Azure Active Directory. Multi-factor authentication, again, as I said, you can configure it. If you want to learn more about that, then you can. this will take you through to the docs.microsoft.com and they've got some fabulous um, uh, training materials here as well. Okay, so please feel free to uh, check out the links in my description. If you want to get your free MFA training kit, um, it is absolutely fantastic and give me a big thumbs up uh, on the video. I would really appreciate it. So there you have it, Microsoft multi-factor authentication, of course, very important in Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Azure. I hope, really hope that you enjoyed the session and that you got something out of it. Now, as always, if you've got questions, comments, please get them down below and I will do my best uh, to answer them for you. And as always, if you've not subscribed to the channel, go ahead, click on that subscribe button up there, ring the bell and you won't miss out on future postings. And uh, I would really appreciate it if you would go ahead, hit that like button and because uh, it really helps my channel out. Okay, so that's it for this week. Thank you so much again. Stay safe and I'll see you next time. Take care. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.